In a back office at McDonald's in Mount Washington, Kentucky, teenager Louise Ogborn is naked and in tears. Donna Summers, the assistant manager who had strip searched her, has to get back to work. The caller had suggested she bring in her fiance, Walter Nix, who goes by the name Wes. This 43-year-old exterminator is about to continue the interrogation. You left this middle-aged man with a naked, frightened... She was covered. ...with an apron. She was completely covered. But as the video shows, Louise is tugging at the apron, which barely covers her top, and the sides of her legs are exposed up to her buttocks. What were you thinking? I didn't think Wes would do anything. I trusted him. It's the height of the dinner rush. Donna Summers leaves the 90-pound teenager alone and vulnerable in the office with the 230-pound Nicks. Why couldn't you run out? I was naked. I was scared. I mean, any normal person in the situation, they wouldn't have ran out. You're convinced there's no way you could have done it? There's no way. Did you think about it? I wanted to so bad, I wanted to run. And you would have had to have run through the restaurant. I couldn't have done that. I couldn't have ran out the back door. I couldn't have done anything. I couldn't bring myself to humiliate myself worse than I already was. Humiliation, as it turns out, would be the least of her worries. Now it's Walter Nix who's following the caller's commands, having Louise drop her apron, bend over, stand on a chair. Then, as ridiculous as it sounds, he tells Louise to jog and do jumping jacks, to shake loose anything, the caller says, that she might be hiding. Incredibly, Nix complies with the caller's outlandish demands, and it's only the beginning of two more hours of torment. Why did you follow their instructions? My parents taught me when an adult tells you to do something, that's what you do. You don't argue, you know, somebody smacks you on the hand, you listen. And everyone, it seems, is listening to that voice on the phone. He even talks to Louise. He told me if I love this job and if I need to keep my job, then I would cooperate. According to Louise, when she fails to address Walter Nix as sir, the caller tells him to hit her violently on the buttocks over and over. Here, it goes on for almost 10 minutes. He told me that I was asking too many questions, so he was told to hit me. And I said, please don't do this. This is so ridiculous. This is stupid. Please don't. But that would only make him hit you harder. Yes, and more times. By the end of the beating, painful red welts appear clearly on Louise's body. And during it all, Donna Summers keeps walking in and out of the office. Every time you hear her coming in, what happens? He throws the apron at me and tells me, like, shh, don't tell Donna. When you walked into the office, what would you see between her and Walter? She was sitting on one side, he was sitting on the other. They weren't saying a whole lot. And she was covered. And she was covered up all the time. But there's at least one occasion when Summers comes in before Nix throws the apron over Louise. When we try to show Donna Summers the videotape. You say you didn't see her without her clothes on, but there she is. And you walk. Okay, we're not going to answer questions about I that. Passed. She can't talk about this? Summers' attorney, who's off camera, won't allow her to respond. Why didn't you tell Donna at that point? I begged her every time she came in the room, get me out of here. Please get me out of here. Donna, please, please, I didn't do anything wrong, please believe me. And she puts her head on your shoulder, and she told us she was saying to you, please help me. No, she didn't. It's not what she said. Couldn't you feel her head on your shoulder? Uh, I don't recall that particular incident, I don't. She says she's begging you to rescue her. She never said that to me. And every time Summers walks out of the office, Louise says Nix resumes and intensifies her torture, following the caller's instructions. My soul just left my body. I just went numb to everything so that I could just survive. Clinical psychologist Jeff Gardier says Louise's reaction is not uncommon. It's almost an out-of-body experience. It's, it's, it's like they're standing right next to themselves as this whole thing is happening. 
and they can't do a thing about it. It's, it's a nightmare where they can't wake up. After more than two and a half hours of dehumanizing treatment, Nix, again on the instructions of the caller, forces Louise to perform oral sex on him. You were a prisoner. I was. And a victim of sexual assault. Yes. Almost three hours into Louise's ordeal, the caller tells Nix to hand the phone back to Summers and incredibly instructs her to bring in someone else. This time she ushers in Thomas Sims, a 58-year-old maintenance man who works at the restaurant. He gets on the phone with the caller, but Sims refuses to comply with his demands. Tom told me this man is asking for her to drop her apron so I can see her without that apron. And I said, do what? And it floored me. Only then, Summer says, does she realize she's been had. I couldn't believe it. Could not believe it. I had been had like no other person been had. Soon, the office is crawling with McDonald's supervisors. You know, on the video, you see the managers come in. They seem panicked. I guess they realize it was so unbelievably wrong. Only then does someone finally call the police. They arrive within five minutes. The Mount Washington police station, it turns out, is only a quarter mile away from the restaurant. You know, there's a lot of things in my mind that I think they could have done. And I don't understand why they didn't do them. Buddy Stump is a detective with the Mount Washington police. He arrests Donna Summers' fiancé, Walter Nix, and he begins to try and find the caller assuming that he's someone who lives in the area. I said, this has got to be somebody uh, on a payphone, you know, maybe over to Winn-Dixie, and uh, they're getting their jollies off of watching all the action and the police roll in. But where the investigation will lead and who it will point to will stun everyone involved in the case. I'm a Jew, he a Jew, she a Jew, we some Jews, wouldn't you like to be a Jew too? Only if you're in the bloodline. strip searches. The most famous of these incidents took place at a McDonald's in Mount Washington, Kentucky. There was a videotape security camera that had filmed. We didn't hear what the instructions were, but due to, to the actions that were uh, had taken place, what the victim was doing in, in the video and stuff, it was uh, pretty evident what each instruction was. An anonymous caller pretending to be a police officer told the assistant manager that an employee had stolen some money. He said, I'm Officer Scott, and he said, I'm with the police department. I'm investigating a complaint. It went directly from a theft into a drug thing. So I was asked to search her clothing. You know, he would tell me, take her shoes, click them, take her shirt, shake it out. I know how it seems to people, but you weren't on the phone with me. The man has convinced 70 to 100 other places the very same thing. He's very good at what he does. Very good. He sounded like a police officer. And, um, I'm thinking, okay, you know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. He was getting some kind of satisfaction by being an authoritative figure and telling people what to do and then realizing by the phone conversation that they were actually doing what he said. He's telling me that I needed to get someone to sit with her while he goes and gets somebody to come in to pick her up. The caller then asked the manager if she was married or had a boyfriend. She said that she had a fiance. Then the caller asked if she could have her fiance uh, come to the restaurant and assist uh, her with the, the strip search of the victim. He says, well, why don't you have him come up and sit there? I mean, you can trust him. So I um, called Wes, my fiance, we were going to get married, and asked him if he would come up. The manager goes about doing her duties of, of running the uh, restaurant and uh, leaves the fiance there in the office. And then the caller starts giving instructions over the phone of, of things that he wants uh, the victim to do and uh, what he wants the uh, fiance to tell her to do have her remove her apron and, and uh, instruct her to do jumping jacks and jog in place and, and uh, 
several more things. She was still in high school. Uh, the kind of person she was, she was actually graduating the top 10 in her class. And uh, she was scared of being in trouble with the police. So she sort of just went along and uh, did whatever uh, the fiance told her to do because uh, she didn't want to be in trouble for anything. During all this time, I'm working. I'm running the floor, I'm getting change. And then when I would walk into the office to get the change or whatever I had to get, Wes would be sitting where he was when I left. And she was sitting where she was and no one said anything. After over two and a half hours, Summer's fiance, Walter Nix, did something that was unthinkable. Complying with the instructions of the caller, he ordered the employee to perform a sexual act. There's no way that I could uh, take away from what happened to her. A lot of people, you know, look at you and go, well, you're, you know, you're a nut, you should be strung up. I've had it even said to me. But it's really hard because you weren't there. The Milgram study showed us that most people would do that. If you structure the environment such that, you know, you provide all the authority and, and you know, the commands, just anybody might do this. But I do think this sounds worse. Mm -hmm. You think this is worse than what Milgram did? With the Milgram, there was somebody like right sitting right there and instructing them. If they hesitated, they could turn, and then somebody could encourage them, and and they could sort of maybe psychologically leave that responsibility on that other person. But in this case, the police officer's on the phone. He's not standing there. Exactly, it's a very good point. You know, you look back on it, you say, I wouldn't have done it. But unless you're put in that situation at that time, how do you know what you would do? You don't. You know. Over 60 other people did exactly as Donna Summers did. Why is it so easy for us to obey orders even when we know they are wrong? Why are we willing to inflict pain on others if someone else takes responsibility? There's nothing more difficult for people to violate a social structure which all participants have initially accepted. It reminds me of a situation that once occurred in South America. I was in an airplane. The pilot came into the plane, he was drunk. He was reeling toward the cockpit. Passengers looked at each other, but no one got up. No one said to the pilot, you're drunk, we can't fly in this plane. There are a set of pressures that keep you in the role that you've initially accepted. Y'all know what Friday nights are like. We've got to be by the book tonight. You don't have a customer? I want you to clean, clean, clean. Let's get to work. This is Officer Daniels with the police department. I have a woman here saying one of your employees took money out of her purse. You have a young lady who works at the register, about 19 years old, blonde. Becky, come with me. I swear I didn't take anything. I don't know what's going on here. I'm just trying to do my job. Calm down for me, okay? You don't realize what kind of trouble you're in. We need to find the money, but I'll need your help till I can get down there. We really have two choices here. He's saying he will have to take you to jail. Or what we could do is have you strip search her right now. I can strip search you here. What? No. No. Is this okay to be doing? Oh, well, yeah, of course. You're making a really difficult situation run very smoothly. I'm just trying to do my job. I didn't do anything. I'm going to need you to address me as sir, understand? Yeah. Listen to me. Sir! This behavior will not be tolerated. What the hell is he doing back there? I did a bad thing. That man's asking me to do things that ain't right. Help me. Please stop talking. 